and to all our friends uh, from uh, everywhere who have uh, joined in. Now, the LNS platform uh, has been uh, built as a dynamic platform that will continue to evolve to the need of the current time in the uh, UMS. Let me begin by just telling you a very short uh, backdrop okay, behind the establishment of this platform. Now, it was not long ago, isn't it? It was just about three to four months ago that we were all happily in our comfort zone uh, having conventional face-to-face -face lecture, tutorials in our laboratory, in our clinic, and we was blended with online learning. And we were practicing uh, blended learning and students were all uh, benefiting from it. It really came very, very suddenly, isn't it? Okay, the COVID-19. All activities, conventional activities, face-to-face -face activities were disrupted. Okay, so what do we do? All of our students, we cannot interact with them and they cannot interact with one another physically. That was our conventional way. So we now go into a state, according to Charles Hodges, who say that, you know, we are now in a state of emergency and we need to go and migrate to another environment. We need a temporary shift at the moment when alternate delivery mode because of the crisis at the moment. So they call it, we need to remind, uh, migrate to a remote teaching environment. So from blended learning, where we're face-to-face -face as well as online, and now because of the disruption, so the face-to-face -face is taken away, now we only have the online. So that online, we shift it, and we go into remote teaching and learning online. Which means that uh, in Basa, we call it as uh, PDPP, Sachara PPJJ. So here we use a lot of asynchronous as well as asynchronous uh, approaches. There are of course a lot of challenges. So according to Prof TNC, as mentioned just now, you know, we, we, we struggle. What to do, what to do? You know, the victims are our students. How could quality education still continue to reach out to them in spite of all these uh, problems? So we found you know, that uh, we, among ourselves, the lecturers, from face-to-face, -face, go to remote learning. And for many people, what is remote learning? Suddenly, what is synchronous? What is asynchronous? So it's all together new to us. We need to be upskilled. We need to have uh, new skills. We need new mindset, considering the way that we teach and the way that we bring our students to learning. And we even the way we assess our students is called alternative e-assessment that must come in. So, at that point in time, uh, we are very grateful okay, uh, to all the IPTA and to all the experts. They came in to hold a lot of webinars. Okay? So, for example, uh, Professor Surya, okay? uh, we have Professor Kari, we, we have uh, all over the IPTA. And everyone was so busy you know, following up because we need to be retooled, we need to be rescued. So, we need to learn. And that was our condition, isn't it? Okay, that was our challenge, but we were taking an effort to prepare ourselves. Students-wise, they also have their challenges because uh, there is a digital divide. Some students, they only use smartphone. They have no money to buy a laptop. Okay? Uh, some even don't have a laptop. They have to borrow from their friend. And this is the real condition here in Sabah. Okay? Accessibility is a big problem. We carry out a survey and out of our 7,300 students, we find that over 10,000 are living in localities with zero connectivity to low connectivity. So even if they are able to synchronously come to you, but after a little while you see them leaving because the line is unreliable, so they got cut off. So the learning style also have to change. An example, you know, we have uh, Yonom Pia, Mabin, uh, this is one of my students, so we have a Google Meet, and she climbed up the hills, you say, to get the line. Uh, of course, we now mostly being, okay, uh, they are classical examples, you know, of people who are so passionate, so determinant, determination, determination is so strong, okay, so they find means to overcome. For this, I congratulate our students at Sabah. I feel, you know, that many times, 
it is in within constraints, okay, limitation that our students become very innovative. So this is where our TNCA Professor Rasid Meyer gave us the challenge to our Pusat A Pembelajaran, to our center of e-learning. Can we help our students? Can we help our lecturers? Okay, how could it be? So we came up then with this. In the line, along the line of UMS campus Brahma slogan, we need to care for one another. So this platform uh, caters for you know a common concern. All of us now we cannot meet face to face. So at least virtually we can all come to this platform with a common concern. Right now itself, remote teaching and learning. How could we do a better job out of this? And we want to learn from one another. Isn't it? So many of us uh, somehow during those period of uh, the MCO and this uh, social uh, distancing, we were able to actually come up with innovative ideas, innovative uh, approaches, and areas you know that is having low connectivity, 2G connectivity. We were able to make use of you know uh, devices is able to reach out to our students. So this is where. Uh, this is a platform for you to share, okay, all those innovative ideas. And all of us who come in to look at your sharing, we are able to benchmark upon it, we're able to adopt it, we're able to adapt it, and from there itself, we can even modify and do a better job. And this is actually the purpose of the L at UMS platform. It is indeed, okay, a place where you create, you innovate, you cooperate, and then you share, you share. Okay, to inspire others and we get ourselves you know, connected not only locally but even this platform is open globally so we hope you know that uh, other experts may even come in in due time okay to support us so this is the L at UMS and this is the <coughs> uh, URL so please come in and uh, we explore we see and there are a lot of resources over here okay and uh, all the sharing that you give us, you just have to click at the uh, Google form over there to submit your sharing. Okay, and then uh, this sharing we will put it according to your faculties. And we hope, we hope that you know the academic staff within the faculty will be able to look at your uh, innovative ideas, and at least we will get help from one another. So it might be very faculty specific, you see. Okay, so. Uh, inside here, they are also sharing some IPTA video clips. They are all inside here. Uh, a lot of OER resources are also found in our links. So please come in and explore. So, so far, within two months, uh, we have almost 80 lecturers who have come forward, okay, to share their practices. For this, we really say a very big thank you, okay, for your willingness uh, to share. And our sharing might be very little, very small, but it can also be very big. Whatever it is, they are very valuable, okay? Because uh, it might be able to ignite our motivation. It might be able to ignite some new ideas. So for this, we say a big thank you. And among uh, all of you, uh, this is the first cohort, okay, to share, okay? And we hope, as uh, Prof. Rasi says, that uh, in future, we will have uh, more series and among all of us here, you will be invited to also share. So with this, I say a big thank you to everyone.